Good afternoon, everyone. Country Flyboy here, and a more detailed breakdown this time. Um, I'm just going to look at a couple of photos, not the actual trailer. I've been digging through the the trailer in slow-mo, frame-by-frame, looking for a tiniest thing to point out, and I found several intriguing things. Now, this is the first photo I want to talk about. I'm not going to talk about all of them. Before I get started, though, I need to mention that uh, although I'm viewing... It is the 4K photo, but my monitor is not a 4K monitor. So I'm not really viewing it in 4K. And also, I'm recording this using window capture on OBS and scaling it to 1920 by 1080 because it didn't quite fit the frame correctly. So it might look a little odd on your end because it's, it's a pretty large photograph that's getting scaled down. Anyway, I want to talk about this photo first. Now... First, I want to dispel a rumor that this, this photo is of a runway that's underwater. I think it's a bit silly, guys, to say that. Uh, this could very easily be just a quirk of lighting, the way the light is bouncing off of the pavement. It could also be that it just rained and the runway slightly wet. Uh, that You saw that in FSX with some add-ons. It would actually trigger the rain, the wet runway effect, even if it wasn't raining, if it had rained recently. I remember the original OPUS weather engine did that. Um, uh, so, it's not underwater. I'm, it would be really silly for them to put an underwater runway in the trailer. That's just silly. Now, the real thing I want to talk about is, first, look at the lighting. For one, the lighting, the way it's bouncing off of the airplanes, even this part of the elevator, which signals to me we have a real-time lighting engine in effect here. Uh, this is not just the painted textures like with FSX, this is a real lighting engine, which honestly, if they're doing what I think they're doing with the terrain and uh, kind of morphing the terrain mesh to form the 3D buildings and then using the satellite imagery as textures for that, you would need a real-time lighting engine to get working uh, night textures in there. Or at least that would be the easiest way to do it. So I think we have a real-time lighting engine this time around. Now, keeping on the subject of lights... Let's zoom in a bit. Now we're going to have to zoom in to the pixel level to show this. But the thing that caught my eye was with these two runway centerline lights. If we zoom back out, we can see that the camera is probably roughly equivalent to a runway light uh, off frame somewhere. So it's probably a runway light off to our side. That would be where the camera is viewing. And if that's the case, this light here is 200 feet away. And this light here is 400 feet away, because, you know, 200 foot intervals, that's runway edge light spacing. Now, if we zoom in here, we can see that there is some pixels that are a slightly different color than the pavement around them. You can see the pavement around them is one sort of grayish color. And uh, right here we have a little bit of orange hidden in there. That looks like a post. That That makes me think that there might actually be 3D objects associated with the lights this time around on the runway. So no more floating light syndrome like we got with FSX, which honestly I was surprised FSX didn't do, especially considering there was a light object for Pappy lights in the, in the um, default libraries. It just never got used anywhere. But that definitely does look like a lighting post. However, what's interesting is although this light that's 200 feet has it, this one here doesn't appear to have one. Uh, now, granted, this is, if it was there, it would only take up about 10 pixels at most in a very high-res photo. So you may not, it may not even be enough level of detail there to see it. But that light, if my math is correct, would be about 400 foot away, and we can't see the lighting post. Now, this one would be 600 feet away. I think we should be able to see a lighting post here. This one would be about 600 feet away. and Okay, I could see calling out the lighting post with that one, but eh, I think with a 400-foot distance, we should be able to see the light post there. Now, interestingly enough, if we look over here at the taxiway centerline lights, you can see the same thing. You see a slight discoloration around the pavement with a little bit darker and kind of orange thrown in there as well, right underneath a taxiway centerline light, which again makes me think, 3D object, or at the very least in the case of a centerline light, a painted texture associated with the lights. Now, curiously enough, 
You don't actually see it with the runway centerline lights. Very interesting there. Now the other thing I wanted I noticed about the taxiway lighting was how if you follow it along, it curves here, and then from here it goes straight, and out here it either turns to the left slightly or it arcs up, which I think pretty much confirms uh, that sloped runways are a thing. I mean, that was confirmed in the trailer. We saw a sloped runway at what was either Corsival. Someone in my comments said it was Corsival. It might be Lukla. I'm not sure. It's either Corsival or Lukla, looking at it. It's either one. I think it is Corsival. I think he might be right, though. So I think that pretty much confirms sloped terrain in this one. And the last thing to really point out here that I noticed interesting, because you didn't really get a lot of time to look at these shots in the trailer since it cuts pretty quickly. But we have a taxiway sign here, and that that is a detailed taxiway sign. That's not the taxiway signs you get in FSX. They're just a blob, just a square on the ground with the needed text. That's an actual sign. And you can see in this sign over here, it appears to be elevated off the ground by a significant amount. We definitely have more detailed airport environments this time around with what appears to be 3D lights associated with lighting and taxiway signs, more detailed taxiway signs. Now this picture you saw in the trailer, and uh, the only thing I really want to point out here is the 3D grass in the ground. How in this shot, it actually goes out quite a ways from the camera. You know, that plane's probably at least 300 feet away, and they're probably 600 feet away, and the grass is obscuring the feet around some of these giraffes. You can almost see the cutoff point for the 3D grasses right here, like just past that giraffe right there. You can kind of see it where my mouse is moving. But in this shot, the cutoff point seems much closer. The plane is closer probably only 100 to 150 feet away. And that actually looks like the grass cuts off a bit closer this time in this shot. That's really the only thing I wanted to point out with this shot. There's these two shots. This shot here with the animals, I noticed in the trailer, you can't really tell it, well, you kind of can, but you can see it more often in the trailer that the, the birds actually cast shadows on the, um, the ground and as they move. So that was interesting to me. Now this shot here of the Airbus pushing back from LAX, we can definitely see a more detailed airport environment, at least at LAX, very, very detailed. 3D, the actual terminal has 3D depth to it. That doesn't look like painted texture right there. That looks like actual 3D depth, uh, like an underside of the um, terminal there. Especially right in here, you can clearly see it there. Now we do have airplanes in the background, which I actually didn't notice in the trailer. I had to, I didn't notice it till I looked at this shot. Now you can see the other airplanes here. Presumably these are AI airplanes. Are all white. You know, it, it's still a year or more away from release. So if the AI airplanes ain't got textures yet, uh, big whoop. That's no, that's not setting off alarm bells to me. Back here you can clearly see they have uh, some textures on them though. Now, are we going to get real airlines, or are we going to get fictional, like we always have? Probably fictional. I I don't really care, either, if they use real or fictional airlines. I've gotten to where it really wouldn't bother me to see the fictional airlines running around. In fact, I know that Orbit Airlines has a little bit of a, a fan admiration in the community. I mean, people are making repaints of X-Plane aircraft with Orbit Airlines on them. So, I, I find it really funny. So, yeah, if they're not real airlines, that's okay. Definitely not any textures I've seen in FSX with the default airlines. This kind of looks like it might be Virgin or Qantas right here. This one almost looks reminiscent of the Global Freightways texture for the 747 in FS9. But looking at these airplanes, this one, these two here, probably A320neos. But this one right here actually looks a little smaller. Possibly an A319 or 737? Don't know. The other thing I want to point out with this is if you look back here at this jetway, uh, we can see that this is definitely not the jetway from FSX. Uh, this has been this is, seems to be either completely different because the jetway in FSX had the main jet bridge 
it had this section fixed, this section rotated, and a small extension bridge behind it. But if you look at this jetway, you can see that we have the main bridge and we have two extension bridges. You got the rotating section here, a second one here, and a third one here. And you can see the tires underneath all three of them. These two especially, you gotta look close, but you can kind of see the post and where the tires would be on this one. This one doesn't have that, it is fixed to the ground here. So that makes me wonder, are the jetways going to be much more detailed this time around? Possibly even with um, multiple bridges per gate. It's downright, it's possible. I, I don't see why they wouldn't do that. I see no reason why they couldn't. Now, the last thing to point out with this picture is not really anything feature-wise, but it's just to try to orientate ourselves for the next photo. This is LAX, and we can see that arched building thing here, whatever it's called. The tower right here. Now, I got LAX brought up on the little nav map with Google Maps running as my background. And you can see, here's the arch building, here's the tower. Uh, so, if we look at the photo, tower's on the left, arch building's on the right. This would mean that this photo is taken right in this area. Probably at the 70s gates right here, 71, 73 and all, because if you look, you can kind of make out seven and either a one or another seven B. So presumably seven one B, which is the second gate from the terminal itself. And right there it is, seven one B. Here's gate B71, which marked as seven one B because it's probably still gate 7-1 in, you know. This puts us on the south side of the airport. Now, for reference sake, the next photo shows uh, flight planning, and it looks like the airplane's departing LAX with an easterly heading, so most likely departing off of the 7s or the 6s. And if it's pushing back from the same location, it's going to be departing off of the 7s, because they'll be running the departures there. Easier taxi. So here's the next photo, and admittedly, it might it looks like it's a different part of the airport uh, because that's not what you would expect to see. If you're pushing back from gate 71B and you got a terminal right here, that's not what you would expect to see. I'm going to assume for the sake of the argument that it is departing the same general area of the airport, which would be the south side, and using a runway... 7 left for departure, for the sake of the argument I'm about to make. Now the argument I want to make is, do we have better aircraft this time around in terms of systems? Well, we see 2019 programmed in the transponder. Maybe a goof, maybe just a fun little reference at the fact that this trailer came out in 2019. No big deal there. I want to focus on the nav displays. Now, people pointed out that the nav displays are not moving and my counter to that is, these look like they're in plan view. Uh, they, they actually do, because you can look right here. That looks like an E right there, doesn't it? Which would make that east, west. And you can see we got at least two digits on this side in here, but single digits over here, which would mean this is your you know 0 to 9 zero, and all of these would have two digits at least on a nav display. So this is a north up orientation, most likely the plan view on the nav display. And you can clearly see that over here, the airplane's kind of oriented pointing north easterly. And it looks like the plane and on the nav display, it keeps that north up orientation in plan view. Now the real thing to look at is you can actually see the flight plan that's programmed into the nav display. And you can see that the green line actually arcs between the waypoints. It looks like it has you take off, turn towards a waypoint, and then go up toward the northwest. Now that waypoint appears to be close to LAX, northwest of it, and the track continues northwest after that waypoint. And uh, so let's go through it. We'll assume for the sake of the argument that this is a SID programmed into the flight system, the flight management system. Is there any SIDs that have you take off from the east ops runways, turn towards a waypoint, 
that's northwest and in close proximity to LAX, and then continue northwesterly after that waypoint. And indeed there is. This is the Chatty 5 departure out of LAX, which has its first waypoint, Chatty, within 20 miles of LAX, northwest of the airport, with a northwesterly continuation after that waypoint to Jostle, and all the way to Gorman, if you take that transition. If you take one of the other transitions, San Marcos or Quang, you go more westerly after Jostle. So the full procedure here, departing from the southern runways, which is the assumption we're making, 071, radar vectors chatty, Jostle, and then the assigned transition, which we'll assume for right now is Gorman because it continues northwest. Which, looking back at our Airbus, that actually looks like it matches up. Again, this nav display looks like it's in a plan view and doesn't see if it, I can't really tell if it has the runway heading until vectors, but it does have a nice little arc to a waypoint, and that does look like a waypoint because I see at least five letters there, although they're too low res to make out the lettering. But it is a waypoint northwest of LAX in some measurable distance of LAX. So, I think looking at this, it's possible that has the Chad E5 departure loaded. Uh, it definitely matches up with the plate. Now, the one thing that makes me think it might not actually be that is if we bring the uh, SID back up. If you look at the SID, Jostle's only one mile away from Chatty. If that were the case, if it's only one mile away and that procedure is loaded, you'd expect to see Jostle right about here somewhere, but you don't see it. It is also possible it's just a loaded flight plan that happens to have that waypoint in there. But looking at this, I'm not saying that, yes, it's confirmed we have more detailed planes around this time, but I think it's more probable that the planes are more detailed this time around. I see no reason why they couldn't or shouldn't be. Uh, if it were my decision, I'd want all the airplanes to be not necessarily study level, especially considering I hate that fucking buzzword, but at least Aerosoft Airbus level quality, I think. It should be all the default planes should be at least that level of detail, which is certainly doable. I see no reason why you couldn't, even with a console release. Uh, there, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that. Consoles, consoles have the power and... They have the controls to do it as well. I can think of ways to get that done. It's not, at least from a, thinking of a way to do it, not that hard. Now, technical implementing it, that's a different story. But yeah, I think it is more likely we have better default planes this time around. Now, this shot is of the A320neo flying, and uh, this is a lower res because this was kind of an afterthought. I'm recording this section after the main video, although I'm going to edit it in a little bit better. So, this is going to be a lower res image, but I want to point something out. This is clearly flying at night or after sunset into the clouds, and we can see the plane is dark, but not so dark that we can't make out the texture on there, which is nice. I want to be able to look at it. Now, this is part of the text, part of the uh, video right before the lightning strikes. So, just look at it. We can clearly make out the airplane here. I'm going to now show you this photo, which is the airplane after the lightning strikes. And you can see, you can't really see the plane anymore. At least not the texture, you can see the outline of it. But it's gotten so much darker because the light from the lightning is drowning out all the other colors, which is really nice, is exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, nice reflections of the lightning off the cloud, which makes me think, is there going to be heat lightning in Flight Sim? Because in FSX, and I'm, I'm thinking in P3D2, lightning was really just a, an effect. It gets triggered kind of randomly in a certain area. This looks like actual freaking lightning with lighting. And here's a, here's a picture I want to show you. This is a storm... Uh, that was passing by my house a few months back, and the, the storm's probably about 15 to 20 miles away. Uh, this was taken in my front yard, and you can see how the lightning is lighting up the clouds. This is after dark here, and couldn't see the storm, but I was taking pictures of it and uh, finding out they were out of focus later. But you can see how the lightning in the storm 
that you can't see the bolt of is lighting up the clouds around it. And that's, that's colloquially referred to as heat lightning, kind of a slang term for it. And I wonder if that's going to be a thing we can see now. Uh, something like that would be really cool to see in-game. Back to the uh, trailer screenshot. And the thing that catches my attention is this lightning is not cloud to ground. All the lightning in FSX and P3D I've ever seen has been cloud to ground lightning. But this looks like cloud to cloud lightning. So are we going to see different types of lightning? You know, not just cloud to ground and heat lightning, but cloud to cloud as well. Possibly cloud to airplane. <laughs> that would be pretty neat. But yeah, that definitely looks like cloud to cloud lightning there. Very, very neat little detail there. And this is the last picture I want to look at. I saw people pointing out that they think they saw flaws in the G1000s in uh, the trailer, which were they were using as a, a point saying that the systems won't be detailed this time around. Like, like they always are, default level detail, you know. But I'm looking at this. Now, I learned to fly in real life on a G1000, so I'd, actually, I'd, I'd like to think I'd know something when I see it if it's, if it's a major problem. And a few things stick out to me, and only one of them's a negative. And that one negative, the one thing about this that sticks out to me that, that is bad, quote-unquote, is that the transponder's on standby. Whereas in real life, the transponder in the G1000, you can override it, but it's actually automatically controlled. It'll switch between ground and altitude mode uh, by itself. So it should be in altitude mode here. You can override it, and even if it wasn't automatic in-game, that's no big deal. Uh, I, I do notice bearing pointers and DME not brought up, or the inset map. That's totally fine, because you can hide all that. And you see the necessary buttons here, assuming that that's fully modeled. You know, PFD, you hit that soft key, and then you hit bearing 1, bearing 2, DME, all that fun stuff. So the necessary things are there. I don't see any real errors with this display. I do notice a, an enhancement, something I haven't seen on any G1000s in FSX, even add-on ones, and that's this right here. The HSI actually displays the cross-track error. So for those of you who don't know, this HSI, in the real-life airplane, these circles actually translate to a distance off course. This circle here, the inner one, is one mile, and the outer circle is two miles. Right in the middle is on course, so if you're o if this bar is over the inner circle, you're one mile off course, halfway in between, 1.5, and over the outer circle, you're two miles or more off course. If you are more than two miles off course, then this pops up to show you your actual cross track error, how far off course you are. In this case, it shows a cross track error of 4.75 nautical miles. Note that there is a direct two leg programmed in. The waypoint is unreadable, appears to be four letters, so probably an airport. The distance is 6.7 and the bearing is 115. We can actually make that out. The bearing is right here. The desired track appears to be about 070. If we come over here, uh, yeah, 070 is the desired track. The aircraft's track is 28... It actually looks like it says 287 there. Which, uh... Heading's 282. The wind's 0. That might be an error. If the track is 287. We can see it's in a north up. And you can actually catch a glimpse of the... Of the uh, magenta line here. So it looks like he was at LAX and programmed in a direct to, took off and took off, flew around getting the trailer footage, which I, I wouldn't expect any level of realism when you're trying to get trailer footage. Yeah, that's, that's ex exactly what I would do, actually. I probably wouldn't even program that direct to leg in there. Uh, I do notice that the MFD is in a low zoom level. It seems to be in five miles zoom. And another thing that sticks out to me so if you look at uh, Santa Monica right here, you just see the airport indicator at the ARP. But if you look at LAX, you can actually see the runways and the aprons. 
Is safe taxi going to be a thing in default airplanes? Quite possibly, looking at that. Although you don't see it at Santa Monica, but Santa Monica is several times smaller than LAX. So other than that, I don't really see anything standing out. It doesn't look like you have any vacuum indication, though. Fuel does look like eh, Nothing major stands out. You know, something like that, that's easy. It's a, probably just a bug in the gauge. Something that can easily be fixed in the next year and a half before this comes out. So that was me just taking a more detailed look at these screenshots. Um, I just wanted to talk about some of the stuff I had seen in them, especially some of that stuff I have seen nobody really talk about. So I, I wanted to do it myself because a lot of the reaction and trailer or reaction videos I've been seeing people do didn't really mention some of that, zooming into like the pixel level and pointing shit out. So I wanted to do it myself. Anyway. Uh, that was it, really, that's all I want to talk about. If more stuff comes up, I want to keep covering this, because this looks like, holy crap, this looks like a damn good flight sim, right, just right off the bat. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.